Seconds away on Studio 5. I'm going home where the streets are golden. See why finding homes for children tugs the heart of Chris Tomlin. Uh oh, now I'm the woman of God. Now I'm the man of God. Now I'm the servant of the Most High. Then meet the pastor and producer who's charted the careers of Gospels Tasha Cobbs, Casey J, Bree, and Kalante Gavin. This ain't no ordinary words. And then... Take three, marker. Human femur bone. A behind-the-scenes look at Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom with the cast in the hot seat. It's bigger and better and more exciting and... Uh, yeah, man, it's Jurassic. And it's packed inside Studio 5, starting now. Hi there, it is a jam-packed edition of Studio 5, so let's fire up the countdown and see what's making headlines in the world of uplifting entertainment. Number 5. Fuck y'all, 315, that's official. Brings us to North Lincoln High School in North Carolina. Adelaide. Summer breakers, come along. Where receptionist Regina Ballard serenades students with a surprise end of the year twist oh, yeah. on this Etta James classic. Adelaide. Ballard's amazing voice has made this video a viral sensation, and the school receptionist is making headlines across the country. For summer break is ours and At number four. Did you spend more time this week practicing basketball than trying to get those kids out of that detention center? Late night host Jimmy Kimmel goes one-on-one -on -one with Texas Senator Ted Cruz in a charity basketball match that's come to be known as the Blobfish Classic. So on Tuesday night, I made mention of the fact that Ted Cruz was at Game 7 between the Rockets and the Warriors in Houston. He tweeted a photo of himself from the game, and I noticed that he looked like a blobfish. <laughs> the insult led to Saturday's basketball challenge in Houston an 11-9 victory for Senator Cruz, and thousands of dollars for their respective charities. For two guys in our 40s and 50s, we'd beat the living daylights out of each other. You look a little winded. I, I, I think both of us are going to sleep like babies tonight. We're going to pass <laughs> out. And the countdown continues throughout the rest of the show. Get this, there are at least 400,000 children in foster care in the United States. Grammy award-winning artist Chris Tomlin is working to bring that number down. And he's teamed up with his pastor and the group America's Kids Belong to make it happen. This is new music from worship singer Chris Tomlin. Was calling on the church to help solve a major national issue. Something that God just put in my heart. I have not been able to shake it in the last couple of years. The idea of, the, of foster care and adoption in our nation and in our own backyard. There's so many incredible organizations, right, that do amazing things um, and overseas and do incredible work. And I support, I think, almost every one of them in some way. Um, and, but when I found out about America's Kids Belong and how they're doing it, they're doing the work in our own cities in America, in our own states, in our own, I was really moved because I don't hear a lot of people talking about what's going on with the kids in our own nation. America's Kids Belong joined Tomlin on his most recent tour, Worship Night in America, and inspired churches around the country to work to end the crisis. This fire ignites across the nation this will be a solvable issue in our country really quickly just by the church doing what the church is supposed to be doing. Tell me about the organization. So America's Kids Belong is a nonprofit that unites government, business, creative, and faith leaders 
to you in the foster care and adoption crisis in the United States. I think a lot of people think that the foster care crisis is unsolvable, if they even know about it. They think it's unsolvable. And we're just blowing these stats out of the water and um, it is, it's so much fun. And I, I love the picture of the unity on stage translating into the unity in the community for these kids. And I wanted, so I wanted to use whatever influence God's given me at this moment to, to, to speak for those who are really vulnerable, right? I believe every kid deserves a loving family and a family and a chance. And having two kids of my own, having two little girls of my own, I see kids that don't, you know, I see kids without that, it just tears me apart. So I'm like, how can I help? And America's Kids Belong is doing amazing work. And I found out about them through Darren. And so this three, <laughs> it, it works. Darren Whitehead is Chris Tomlin's pastor from his home church in Tennessee, who also co-authored a book with Chris Tomlin on the biblical meaning of worship. This all originated, Chris and his wife Lauren are a part of that church, and uh, he is traveling a lot. And uh, on uh, one of the Sundays, he just happened to be home, and I didn't know he was gonna be there that day. I was preaching on the topic of praise and worship. And little did I know, Chris was eye-rolling in the congregation. Yes. Can I just interject? <laughs> can, can, I, can I interject? Because that, that doesn't sound bad, but I'm never, I'm never at home much on Sundays, I'm, but we're there. And I'm like, I'm fired up. And, getting, and, and then he walks up and says, I got a message for everybody today. It's on worship and praise. I'm like, are you kidding me? The two Sundays I'm home. He's talking about, he's talking about what I talk about every night. I'm yes. like, I wanted to hear something different. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Little did I know that God had a massive reason for, I feel like, me being there that day, how it touched me. I'll let him share. I, 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 I share this every night. But as, as Darren began to share this message on why we praise God and what it is we pray and why, why we're doing what we're doing. I kept thinking, how have I never heard this message? I've spent my whole life leading worship, writing songs, traveling the world. You would think I would have know everything that the, that the Bible maybe says about worship. And I was like, wow, this was like moving in me. I was embarrassed because I'm like, how do I not know this? I'm supposed to be a worship leader and I don't know this. And at the same time, I was like, this is game changing. The essence of it is that there are seven Hebrew words in the Psalms that are all translated into the English word praise. So whenever we read the phrase, praise the Lord, underneath the word praise are seven different Hebrew words. And they all mean something slightly different. They're all a different perspective. They're a different angle. They reveal a little more about practices of worshiping God from the ancient world. It's called Holy Raw. And uh, the, it, it explains the, the seven different words. And then Chris actually shares stories behind some of his songs. And it's the story about how they all came about. <laughs> Chris Tomlin and his pastor, Darren Whitehead, are sharing seven words that will change the way you worship in their book, Holy Roar. It is available right now wherever books are sold. That music you hear in the background, Leon Bridges. He went from dishwasher to recording artist, and he's got a new album called Good Thing. His single, Beyond, is what's playing in my ear this week. I I think you like a kind of I know that grandma would have loved her like she was her own. She makes me feel at home. Oh. Do you think I'm being foolish if I don't? Still ahead on Studio 5. That's the sound of the producer who's charted the careers of Gospels three: Tasha Cobbs, KCJ, and Kalante Gavin. Meet Pastor Marquis Boone. That's why the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And hear his personal story of surviving to lift others up. 
Welcome back to Studio 5. The countdown of the best headlines in the world of uplifting entertainment news continues now. At number three. If I close this deal, I'll be the first black woman to be a VP in the company. It's a Studio 5 first look at Tyler Perry's next film, titled Nobody's Fool. Hi, Mom. Hey, darling. Listen, it's your sister. She's getting out. If you could pick her up, I'd appreciate it. What time? What time, honey? It's jail. You get there when you can, like the song said. This comedy stars Tika Sumter, Tiffany Haddish, Omari Hardwick, and Whoopi Goldberg, and hits theaters November 2nd. Mama, it's Tanya. Who? It's Tanya. Oh, no, Tanya no here. Mama, I know it's you. This connection is so rickety. Hello? What? Mama, you in the window. I'm sorry, what? We not on no cell phone, Mama. I, I can't hear you, baby. I can't hear Oh, my. Mama. At number two. Music man Kirk Franklin shares his joy and pain with those following him on social media, posting this on Father's Day. Yes, I love all four of my children, and they're very important to me. And the youngest one in the house is a boy. And I just want to make sure that he understands that I never want him to ever, ever grow up feeling the pain that I felt from my father. So that's why I work very hard to make sure that he never experiences that. Because no child should ever be raised without their father. A little earlier, he shared, my sister was just sentenced to 30 years in prison. I now feel the weight of wondering if I could have done more. But the question is, do you want to be happy? And we'll get to the final headline in just a bit. Tasha Cobbs, Casey J, Brianna Babineau, the names are very familiar to gospel music fans, but you may not know the man behind the music. Meet Marquise Boone. Joyful noise rising from this Duluth, Georgia church is Kalante Gavin rehearsing for tonight's concert. Kalante is special, man. Like the same feeling I got with like with Tasha and with Casey is that same feeling I get with Kalante. I kind of compare him to um, a Micah Stampley meets Tasha Cobbs wrapped up in one. Like, I mean, it's just. Kalante is one of the newer artists signed to Pastor Marquise Boone's record label. The music producer and pastor has charted the careers of gospel hit makers Tasha Cobbs, Casey J, and Brianna Babineau. You've scored some hits, you've scored some hit makers, but you don't sing? I don't sing, man. <laughs> it's funny, I don't sing. I have no voice, man. I can tell you what note, I can tell you how it goes, but I cannot hold a note. I can't hold a note, I can't sing. I write, but I cannot sing. So you've written songs? Yes, I've written songs, <laughs> you play man. play any instruments? No instruments. <laughs> <laughs> no instruments, man. Can't play a lick, can't play nothing. All I can do is is uh, write and preach. That's it. That's all I can do. Hey, light, look at me. Boone's natural ear and eye for music talent have some comparing him to the music legend Barry Gordy, the architect of the Motown sound. Ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low. Others call him the Clive Davis of gospel entertainment. To me, that's that's a phenomenal statement. You know, I never thought I would be compared to some of the people that I looked up to in that industry, um, and and I really take take you know take you know honored that they people would say that. But I really don't know what I am. You know, I, I know that I'm a passionate person about people, and with that, all this other stuff has kind of blossomed and became what it is. How do you have an ear for who you should reach out to? Because I'm sure. We talk about Brianna and we talk about Kalante. Yeah. You've looked at a whole lot more than a that. A whole <laughs> lot. Like, I get stuff every week, all the time. Um, and some people I, I listen to and some people I'm just like, I'm over music. I've been listening. I don't want to hear nothing or whatever. But I think for the history and how it's happened, it's the people who are close to me that know me that have introduced me or showed something to me that has given me that interest. 
So it hasn't been someone who's come up to me and be like, hey, listen to my CD, hey, do this, or hey, I'm great at this. It's always been somebody who is in front of me or someone who works for me to say, hey, look at this person. Or, and when I listen, I get that feeling. And that feeling is unexplainable. It's, I can't tell you this is the formula and this is what I go through in my head. It's like within that first 30 seconds, I know for a fact whether I wanna sign that person or whether I just wanna move on and go to the next person. And when I get that feeling, I, I don't second guess it. I don't sit down and calculate it and say, okay, how this could work. I literally go off of that feeling and every single time it has not failed me. Just get out of your system, turn to somebody and just say, life hurts sometimes. Success may sound like it's come easy to this preacher with the growing church just outside Atlanta, but he's familiar with failure too. The earliest came growing up in Baltimore, where he was expelled from school. You get kicked out of school in eighth grade? Yeah, eighth grade, got expelled from Baltimore City Public Schools. And <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> so I was a fighter, man. Like a lot of anger issues or whatever. And so I took it out and fighting. So I would fight or whatever. But this particular day, I decided to take my dad's razors out of his, uh, his razor and I put them between my knuckles. And literally while I was fighting the guy, he was getting cut up. And so literally they expelled me from Baltimore City Schools and, you know, it was crazy. I just had a lot of anger problems and I would take it out and fight. So, you know, I've been suspended multiple times for fighting and my mom would be like, you know, fed up with it and upset and all that kind of stuff. But then my dad would be like, well, you know, you ain't no punk, so you gotta defend yourself. But I would never start fights, but you know, I was like a heavy set dude. So they would pick on me and then I would just fight my way in. What's the breaking point? What changed? Cause so, you graduated high school early. I graduated high school at 16. I did high school in two and a half years. So the breaking point for me that I can pinpoint, like, you know, standing here and looking back. So around 13, um, my appendix erupted. And um, they say when your appendix erupted, it, it, it releases a toxin that if it gets to your brain, you die instantly. So I was in the middle of the night, I woke up with all these chills and shivers and I couldn't walk or whatever, called for my parents. They rushed me to the hospital and literally the doctor was like, he's having an epidectomy or something like that. And they rushed me into surgery, um, caught it before it reached my brain, but I flatlined on the bed and it resuscitated me. I spent two and a half months in the hospital. So I had to go to rehab. I had to learn how to walk again. And I think that was like the breaking point for me. Cause I kind of look and then my aunt who is the evangelist, she was kind of like, you know what this mean? God got a call on your life and all this other stuff. So <laughs> she was pushing that. And then what really made me just fell in love with church was, while I was in the hospital, like none of my friends came to see me. Nobody, you know, like it was just my parents and my aunt. And in that moment, I was kind of like, dang, I really need to do something different. Cause clearly the people I'm trying to impress and live for ain't really concerned about me. And here I am two and a half months in University of Maryland hospital, uh, just had an epidectomy and learning how to walk again on a PN tube. And when I got out, I just kind of said, you know what? Let me go ahead and just live my best life now. And that's what I did. So this awakening in me came where I just wanted to really live better than I was. And the child kicked out of school in eighth grade and suspended twice in one day. Went on to finish high school in just two and a half years. It's history ever since, man. <laughs> I've been going hard since then. And by the way, the worship team from Pastor Boone's church have released a phenomenal project. Be sure to check it out. Fresh Start Worship. Well, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. So here's our picture of the week. Artist Ernel Martinez completed the finishing touches on this mural, honoring legendary journalist Ed Bradley. It sits on a wall at the intersection of Belmont and Wyalusing Avenue in the heart of the West Philadelphia neighborhood where the late 60 Minutes correspondent grew up. Ernel Martinez and the Mural Arts Philadelphia program spent two years bringing the multi-layered mural to life. And it's this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. And still to come. Action. Fixed it. Whoa! Oh, stop fixing things. Behind the scenes of a bigger, better, and more exciting Jurassic Park. Strap in for this Studio 5 first look. And welcome back. Here is the final headline in this week's countdown. At number one. Baby's with me now since I showed her how. That's country music's Rory Feek. 
He returned to the stage following the 2016 death of his wife and singing partner, Joey. He's written a new book, Once Upon a Farm. We've got a little over 100 acres now. And in this CBS interview, he opens up about the difficult conversation with his middle daughter, who's gay. She's asking me, are you still going to love me? Mm -hmm. And my first reaction, honestly, was, I don't think so. You weren't sure. Because my conservative Christian faith that has saved me, mm -hmm. that has made me, made it possible to have any joy and peace and love in my life, the first reaction is, is that that challenges that immensely. My job is to love her, even when it's hard or even when I, I don't agree or even if I don't understand, I still love her. I can still love her completely. The summer box office keeps heating up and the wait is finally over. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is here. Here's your Studio 5 first look. Do these animals deserve the same protections given to other species? This movie starts at a crisis point. There is an extinction level event that is going to occur on the island. I know why we're here. A rescue op. Hey, Owen. Save the dinosaurs from the island that's about to explode. What could go wrong? Blue, come with me. You know you can't stay here. Pack your men up right now. That's when we realized that these are not good people that we're dealing with. It was all a lie! The first part of this movie is classic Jurassic, and then you go into this far more dangerous world. We arrive at this mansion where they're auctioning off these animals to the highest bidder. What is that thing? They made it. The Indoraptor. They're gonna sell them. Not blue. They need it for something else. We get to learn a lot more about Owen and his very special connection with Blue. Easy. The Jurassic movies have always been movies about science and imagination merging, thrillers with dinosaurs chasing people around. But at the core of it, the heart of it, they're relationship movies about people. Hey, girl. I say we shut this whole thing down. We hope that people come out with their imaginations expanded of what a Jurassic Park movie can be. These creatures were here before us. And if we're not careful, they're gonna be here after. Welcome to Jurassic World. It's bigger and better and more exciting. And uh, yeah, man, it's Jurassic. That film is in American theaters beginning June 22nd. Still to come on Studio 5. Well, I know my redeemer the sweet voice of Nicole C. Mullen shares a message behind the music. Grab a pen and get ready to be inspired. All of creation. She's next. Welcome back. We are almost out of time. Where did it go? So let's take a look right now at what we're working on to bring you next week. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. You can say we're headed to the throne room. And sitting down with the artists behind some of our favorite worship anthems. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. It's a Studio 5 worship special. Excited to bring you that next week. Also very excited right now to check in with the great Nicole C. Mullen for this week's final word. The song Arise speaks to the heart of a girl and the heart of a woman, the girl that's inside the woman, even the heart of the boy that's inside the man, Talikum, Talitha Kum, where Jesus said, Arise, and said to the 12 year old, Arise, little girl, I say to you, get up. And so I think God is calling us back to life in those places where we've been battered and shattered and wounded and bruised, places where our hope has died, our love has died. 
He's saying it's time to awaken, it's time to arise, and it's time to do the things that I've ordained for you to do. My Such wisdom from Nicole. She is indeed a sweet, sweet spirit. That is going to wrap this edition of Studio 5, but the show continues on on Facebook as well as Instagram. Remember, you can also reach out and touch me at Ephraim Graham on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And I invite you to come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>